Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. Today's episode is a very special one, because not only am I sitting down with a fellow musician, I'm also sitting down with a brewer from one of Quebec's most exciting microbreweries. I am so stoked about this. I've been a fan of their brews for many years now. Get ready, everyone. This is Vox and Hops episode number 219 with Martin Lallier of Mont Regius Bière Artisanale. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today I'm with Martin Lallier of Mont Regius Bière Artisanale. Uh, I'm super, super stoked to be with you. I have been a fan of your brews uh, for, for many, many years now, and I'm going to dive into that in a bit more detail in a bit. But first, let's start with a very simple yet complex question that I like to throw at people. Uh, how have you been coping with 2020? Uh, listening to a lot of music, making lots of beer. Um, uh, it has been a good year for us so far. Although at the beginning of the pandemic, we were not sure where the market was going to go. Um, there was a lot of uncertainty. I must say I was candid at first. I thought it was going to last a few weeks. Uh, and then we realized that the depth and the, uh, how important the phenomenon it is and how it is even changing our social behavior. It's like we entered a completely different culture. That's absolutely true. And, and I see it with my kids even. I'm, I'm wondering, because this is not over <laughs> and it's not going to be over <laughs> anytime soon. And I see it with my kids being so young, having a four-year-old and you know, most of her life will have been lived in social isolation or having to do social distancing. It's, it's, I'm wondering what the effects on kids is going to be actually. Yes. Yes. And when I was uh, briefly at your house, bringing some, some beers, uh, I, I self observed that I would, I, I didn't feel as natural as I am with young children. I like to talk with them and, and ask them where, where they are in their lives. And, uh, I, I, it was kind of a, a frontier. The mask I was wearing was a frontier because I, I knew or I, I thought that they, they would not see my smile. Mm -hmm. And uh, smile, uh, facial expression is such a huge part of our nonverbal communication. So it, this is going to be something for young children like yours and like my uh, youngest six-year-old that they will, of course, uh, uh, adapt to a, a return to normality. They will, they will forget that. But there's going to be something that might stay uh, with them for uh, a good while. Absolutely, absolutely. And it, it is like a barrier, uh, having a mask. Because I do work in early childhood education when I'm not screaming <laughs> for cryptopsy or, or doing vox and hops. I hang out with little kids all day. And there's times during the day I'm thirsty, so I want to drink a glass of water or from my water bottle and I take off my mask and they look at me and they laugh and they're like, ah, look at his mouth, look at his nose. This is something that happens to me. I think it's very, very funny. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, speaking about the brews that you dropped off, we're about to share one right here. Uh, Vox and Hops is all about hanging out with uh, my metal friends, talking about their lives, music and craft beer. Uh, what beer are we gonna be sharing yeah uh, uh, we do a beer uh, a sour uh, I, ipa new england dish ipa uh, with very low bitterness it's called ipa festina but i made a, a key lime pie uh, a few months ago and i thought wow this would be fun in a beer mm. so uh, we basically changed the ops to go towards a more citrusy universe and uh, we found a uh, uh, concentrated uh, key lime juice, and we just added that to the fermenter. And it's a Very really, cool. it really is a fun beer. I love it. Awesome, awesome. Let me crack this open and pour it out. And uh, let's see what it's got. 
cares? It's a gorgeous color. Absolutely beautiful. Cheers. Cheers to you, man. Oh, yeah, Karimi. <laughs> Lactose, a bit of vanilla. Ooh, <laughs> if you close your eyes, it tastes like the pie. <laughs> this is wild. Super fresh. Uh, acidity. It's amazing. 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 Good Cheers to that. Very creative. Uh, how many times does does that happen? The the translation between you cooking something and then subsequently making a beer based upon that influence. Well, looking at me, it might not be evident. I like food, <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I because beer is cooking. Uh, you design a recipe. I I I'm a former designer. I think about designing beers, uh, design in the sense that you put elements together to create an experience. Mm. Uh, I was, uh, two years ago, I was in Rome, first time in that amazing city. And uh, I stopped at the gelateria and I had a, a dessert called affogato. It's a, it's a vanilla, uh, vanilla gelato ice cream. Uh, with an espresso poured on it and chocolate chips. And right from the first bite, I knew it would be a great mix of flavors in an imperial style. So uh, coming back from there, I designed Nocturna Fogato, uh, inspired from that dessert. And uh, we do also La Grande Bellezza, inspired from an Italian pastry that I, I tasted at Marché Jean Talon. Uh, if food is, is great, uh, wine is also because you get great flavors, the mix of woodiness, uh, the tannins, the, the structure of the wine is great. Um, and, and more and more, I think, uh, we as a brewery and, uh, the market in general is going towards what I call cocktail beers. Mm. These are beers that have a very, very remote link to beer itself, as far as the experience of drinking them. The key lime is an example. You could have a sour cocktail uh, with lime juice, and it could be like what you're drinking. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think from talking to consumers that, especially the younger crowd, having come into the, uh, the beer world, with New England IPAs, milkshake, and, and all of this. And also because in our food, in general, North American Western food uh, is not what it was when I was a kid in the 1970s. Um, uh, we would have a roast, potatoes, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, bitter food as well, cauliflowers, turnips, and things like that. Uh, so bitterness was a very important component. Uh, uh, brown sauce was very present, but now these things have, have gone because we are a in a in an international food culture, uh, industrial industrialized uh, condition in a way by these uh, design flavors. So when we get to beer as new consumers, we come from that universe, not from the traditional local universe, and. My theory is that we're looking for flavors like that, and we enjoy them more. Hmm. That's very, very, very interesting. I didn't think about that. And it's true. It's very, very true. Um, take me back to your very, very first beer. Do you remember the first beer that you ever drank? Uh, I was with my cousins in the Laurentians, and they were much older than I, than I am, and I was at the time. Uh, and it was a warm summer, uh, a warm July day. Uh, I had gone to stay with them at the, the chalet that they have in the Laurentians, and uh, they played a joke on me. They sent me <laughs> fishing in the river where there are rocks. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, with nothing to drink. So I had a very long day in the sun. I walked back <laughs> to their pickup and there's a case of, I don't know, 
oaky for molson something having stewed for a full day <laughs> in the back of a pickup truck on a july day and i remember opening i i had no opener of course and we we're talking about a time when there was no twist caps on bottles so i did that on the truck bumper and i drank that and from that day i ate a beer i ate the idea of beer and taste of beer until i was in my early 20s wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> do you I remember visited, i visited belgium and things change from there uh, belgium does have a beautiful beautiful scene that can do that to you for sure do, do you remember that first beer that you did enjoy the first craft beer that really turned you on to the fact that craft beer could be something more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was playing rugby. We had a trainer that was Belgian uh, or French, maybe. Uh, and he had us taste a Feigemont after a match. Very cold. And you, you, after a strong, a strenuous sport like rugby, that was so comfortable and so relaxing that it kind of got me into having beer as a pleasurable uh, uh, experience or relaxant. And then I worked in design studios and on Fridays, uh, my boss, she would send me, oh, and go and buy some beers for, uh, to end the week. So I would go down to SAQ and buy some beers and <laughs> taste them. So it was really an experience of tasting beers from uh, elsewhere in the world. Is that because you didn't think that there was a craft brew scene here or you just weren't aware of it? I, I must say that back then uh, I was very into exotic things and uh, the local scene I, I, I don't remember aside from Unibrew and other breweries that were back in those days uh, that made uh, strikingly different beers from mainstream more but I'm, I'm probably wrong and uh i apologize to my forebears uh <laughs> I, I don't remember that, but there were a lot of very good beers just that i didn't know about them mm. uh how about your whole brewer story how exactly did you go from design school mm. to 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 running a sick ass brewery um i um <clears throat> i i was looking for a, a pastime and uh, being a designer, you're sitting at, at, at a computer all day, you're moving pixels, you're creating communications that are not addressed to you, but to other people. Great job, it's a great career, I loved it. Um, but I, I wanted to do something that I could share with people. Mm. So it might have been cooking, it might have been many other things, but I decided to try to do beers. So I bought a beer kit and I got super nerdy uh, about that. <laughs> I, I tend to be like that when I'm passionate about something. At first I, I become, I read everything, I watch everything, I listen to everything. And uh, yeah, I started brewing beers. And uh, the most important, the most interesting thing to me was that when you give something that uh, you have made and that it's fairly well made and other people accept it and they have a good time consuming it, you feel good. You have a great time. If you make a cake or a, a piece of meat on the barbecue and people love it and they have a great, and, and you see that they communicate to you that they have a great feeling from that experience that you created, makes you feel good. So from then on, I saw that I, I was at a point where they, uh, the owners of the, uh, the studio had asked me to consider buying the studio from them. Um, and that asked, that question asked a greater question, greater mm -hmm. questions if I wanted to invest myself uh, in, with greater depth into that design business. And uh, at the time I was starting to brew and having great time doing that. So I, I did not uh, engage myself into the further on into the design business. And I, I started creating the, this uh, 
business scenarios for beer. Wow. At first, it was a beer store. Really? Uh, in, on, on the Plateau Mont-Royal, hmm. where, where we were living. Uh, <clears throat> it would have been kind of the SAQ of international beer. Um, and then it was a, a small brewery with a counter on Mont-Royal Avenue um, so that people could come buy their beer and go home or we could deliver with bicycle kegs or beer <laughs> would have been something but uh, Mount, Royal, Mount Royal Avenue where we were not living far up uh, if you translate Mont Royal to Latin it becomes Mont Regis ah see I didn't know I didn't know where the name so, came so, from so that's the first version of that name and when we moved on the south shore um, buy a house like many people that move outside of uh, downtowns. Um, we, were, uh, we were located on the South Shore, which is a region called Montérégie, which comes from region of the Mount Royal. Hmm. So the name Mount Regis could be recycled and be We <laughs> 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 <Three> are. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> and that, that bicycle delivery tap room is so avant-garde having thought about it back then yeah because it, it is so what it would work right now especially with yeah, yeah, it is. with yeah. covid happening but it's but crazy there, there are physical challenges of course so it, to start a, uh, a brewery uh in a downtown area uh, or in a place like plateau mont mm -hmm. uh a production brewery mm -hmm. uh, but absolutely yeah, it would have been fun yeah, having just spoken to Mutoid, yeah. Nicolo Mutoid, who just opened in Ashadaiga, I understand exactly what you're talking about, the whole getting everything set up in an old building and making it all work very complicated and getting the right power. If you need the, to get that right power for the brew system is a nightmare too. So I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, how about you mentioned, uh, do you still enjoy watching people enjoy what you are creating. I know for myself as a musician, every album that we release, we're always very curious to read the comments to see if people are getting it, if they're enjoying it, or if we're gonna get shat on. So so, do you yeah. still hunt for that feeling of, of uh, the appreciation? Yeah, it's great, it's great. And now more than ever, we are receiving very positive feedback for, from our, for our beers. We had a few hiccups at the start, but now people are, are having a great time and and this is the most satisfying thing for me is that we send products out there and people pay their money and and it's worth getting money. Oh, yeah. sending money you you have many choices of things you can buy with a dollar <laughs> speaking and uh if they choose to spend it on our products and they have a good return a good return on their investment so to say that is the best thing for me very cool. Uh, because I, I don't make beers for myself. I make them for other people. Hmm. I'm not saying that I don't enjoy, enjoy what I do. Just like a musician, you enjoy the physical act of playing and being in front of other people. I used to be a pipe organist. Uh, <laughs> the physical thing, the physical uh, sensations you get from playing an instrument, the sounds, the, the effects it has on, on your body, is also a great, a great enjoyment. And also because you worked hard practicing and if you get it right and, and you get it to a point where it's natural, you don't have to think about it, it just happens out of your hands, it's fantastic. It's so true. it's the same with beer. That's true and just look how beautiful it is. Yeah, and uh, you see you talk about the visual aspect of it and it's important that be, a beer be uh, attractive and especially you know in our days where Instagram has such a huge influence on the the desire of people that's true that's true which leads me perfectly to my next topic which is hype hype you guys uh, don't seem to be a brewery that's that's chasing hype to make you know the the trendy trendy brews you make brews that you think are interesting and that yeah. you want to to explore and and you're you're seeking that 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 connection to to food and and 
experiences. So, so where do you stand on hype and, and how do you feel about the breweries that are just exploding because of the hype? Where do you stand on all that? I think, um, uh, I, I know which breweries you are referring to and, um, I'm certainly not going to be critical of them. I think that if you uh, promise an experience uh, to people and you deliver on that experience, that expectation, and you do it well, there, there is nothing wrong, uh, au contraire, uh, to, uh, to doing this. It's, uh, it's, it might be a trap, a trap for themselves, because they are limiting their choices to uh, probably what that I brewery in the, in the United States is doing and that mm -hmm. they're inspiring themselves very strongly on. Um, they might not do things that would be interesting to them or make uh, create a possibility for their consumers to have a different experience. Mm -hmm. in, in other terms, take a, take a risk. Uh, recently, we did uh, something that everybody thought I sh thought we shouldn't do: a smoky, <laughs> a smoky stout uh, with coffee and uh, <laughs> 106 IBUs of the ops. Normally, in 2020, you don't do something like that because this is not safe. <laughs> it's not safe because you mix too many flavors that like the smoky beers uh smoke beers are not currently the trendiest thing right now but we did and to my great surprise people loved it uh and the of course we got it out uh, at halloween time and we played with halloween uh, yeah. uh visuals so it was fun but we we are yes we are uh, observing trends as well and we are putting beers out there so that people desire them. Uh, stores will want to buy the cases and offer that to their consumers. And it doesn't sit on the shelves for months because it's a brown lager and people have no knowledge, no knowledge how to appreciate that um, uh, in our time. Mm. But we are taking risks. Uh, and it's always, it, you try to find your place as a brewery owner, a brand owner, into a market that is uh, as a large offer right now. So we try to be perceived as a uh, creative brewery uh, that do many styles and that make uh, accessible beers, but always with a creative touch. Even when we started with a classic uh, beer, like a Weizenbach, we will add chocolate uh, <laughs> in it because it's, it fits in it and, and it's fun and it's a different thing uh, than the, the offer currently available. It's amazing, it's amazing. And uh, that, that smoky coffee stout, the, the breakfast of champions. Yeah was so damn good and it was smart that uh, sh show the can again so people could see it at home how you played with with halloween coming out and it, it dropped just at the right time we have, uh, we have three different labels uh and there are two different faces on each yeah uh, each of these labels they, it was super smart random so if stores got a case they might have a random amount of one design and the other design. Super cool. Uh, I didn't design the illustration. I'm not an illustrator. I'm more a typographer. Uh, but it was fun. And when I was a teenager, I wanted to do special makeup effects <laughs> you know, or movies and things like that. So that's it's awesome. Fun to not to stay on past. I, I remember my first beer that I had from you guys. And it was a Nocturna. And I had picked it up at uh, Ilza Fimzibon okay. at Marché Jean Talon, which is, one of one, which is one of my craft beer haunts that I like to frequent. And I remember just seeing this bottle, super cool looking. It was always very simple, yeah. the, the visual aspects of your beer, but always very intriguing. And just the, the different coffee strains. So of course I had to try them all. 
<laughs> you know, I'd buy one every every weekend or so and just enjoy it. Uh, still one of my favorite beers that you guys do is the Nocturna series. So, so can we talk about that a little bit, uh, where that all came from and the whole inspiration behind it? Uh, I've, uh, I've always loved stouts. I'm a coffee drinker. I, I love uh, tasting the notion of terroir in coffee. It's, it's more present than it ever was. And uh, I, I first did the Nocturna for the stouts. Nocturna meaning nocturne, so night in Latin. Uh, and um, I wanted the coffee to be the star. So we do a, a stout that is very soft and subdued. It has all the texture, the, the roastiness is, is, is subdued a little. You get the color, you get the nose, but the coffee sits on top of that and things jam together. Okay. So uh, after that, we did a few coffee version. We did uh, a vanilla version, uh, which we currently have in bourbon barrels. Nice. Now, uh, we did the affogato, a dessert uh, version. Uh, we have a new coffee one uh, with a Brazilian coffee. And we'll be adding the coffee this week to, uh, to one of the uh, new version, a Kenyan coffee. Nice, nice. Uh, and I, current, I, we did a test recently with a habanero peppers. So it's yes. got a chocolate, lactose, and habanero peppers. Not to a point the 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 uh, the pepper bite is more going to be a warmth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A, a sting. Yeah, I, I I don't like those. Yeah. Overly spicy stouts. I I don't get it. It ruins. The balance of the beer yeah in my opinion for sure um i've heard a rumor a whispering of seltzers do you <laughs> want to can we talk about the seltzers yeah well we'll be doing producing those soon uh i i i discovered that because we do ip ipa cubic sub yeah there's a uh, there's no residual sugar in that beer and some people really like it because it, 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 there's almost no bitterness to it. Uh, it's very light. People drink it as a refreshment. Uh, it goes uh, completely um, perpendicular to the very sweet IPAs that market is currently very fond of. And it's still a beer that sells well. Uh, and when I saw the Seltzer uh, concept, uh, appear in the USA, like it's not, it's not new. It, it's been existing for many years, but there's a lot of consumers that do not like beer. Mm -hmm. They don't like the maltiness of it. They don't like bitterness at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I thought maybe would be something interesting to try. So I did a few batches of those like 20 liter uh, tests uh, last summer. And we, we got tremendous feedback from that. Uh, uh, we did a lemon, lime, pepper, and verbena uh, version. Very nice. And we did, we did one uh, with uh, pink, um, pink lemonade, but pink uh, grapefruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also I did one based on uh, a cocktail that I really like. So we'll be adding a few versions of those coming out hopefully before December. Really? Very, very, very cool. And I, I, I'm not... I... And uh, the, the fact, it's fun, it's light, and we're not using distilled alcohol in it. We're doing a complete fermentation of organic um, cane sugar. Wow. And uh, we go for towards 4.5%. So it's very drinkable, and it doesn't have a medicinal alcohol taste that some of the commercial cells are at. And I think next summer, there's probably gonna be 15, 20 breweries getting into that market because it's, we, we hear the rumor in the US and uh, if you go to a, the SAQ and you ask them about White Claw, yeah. the guys are amazed that they will get in a store 130 cases 
and I'm not talking in Montreal, I'm talking in a small city outside, uh, and the 130 cases will be gone in two days. Mm. Um, so I think there's a huge market. I think it's going to affect breweries. That's the reverse, because all the small beers, light beers, will be challenged by that product. Mm. Because people will want to discover new experiences, and it's natural. Uh, you're a musician. You're probably consuming a lot of music. Uh, I, I listen to all styles of music. I rarely listen to the same pieces because mm -hmm. I'm always enjoying discovering new things. So it's the same for beer or alcohol consumers. Very, very interesting. I, I, and I think you are right that it's exploding in the, in the States. And as Alexander Kendrick, the Vox and Hops alumni, the sound engineer for Cryptopsy in the States would say, it's because the claw is the law. <laughs> <laughs> I personally have had a white claw. I bought one for Alexander Kendrick. And I don't drain poor things very often, but that one's went straight down the drain. I, I it, it's not for me, but I, I think that are you one going to be the first craft beer brewery that in Quebec that's starting to do hard seltzers? Uh, no, no. There's one that uh, I think Oshlai currently. Oh yes, no, you're right. Yes. Starting to uh, produce those, probably from uh, distilled alcohol. You're so right. You're right. Water rolled. Very uh, cool. I, I'm looking forward to tasting it. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. I love it. Uh, let's talk about music we have to as Vox and Hops. Uh, have you ever listened to metal music? And if you have, you just mentioned that you listen to all kinds of stuff. So so what, what bands have you listened to or do you listen to? I'm 50 years old now. So I've listened to Metallica in the 80s when I was nice. a young teenager, of course. Um, there was a band called Barf. But there still is a band called Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I, I listen to metal regularly. There's a uh, there's a guy uh, in Saint Bruno where we are. He is part of the band um, Beyond Creation. Oh, fuck yeah, yeah, I love them. Yeah, they're my they're my brothers. Yeah. Oh yeah, great musicians. Absolutely. I really was amazed and impressed by the quality of their. Uh, their compositions. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I love melodic and symphonic metal. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And my guitarist, uh, Chris Donaldson, produces all of the Beyond Creation records. So, oh, yeah. so very, very cool. Small world. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, how about when you guys are brewing? Do you guys listen to music? Is there a brewer's playlist? And what would be on it? A lot of Hammond B3. Yeah, I own a, a Hammond, not a nice. B2, but another one. Uh, there's always a keyboard. I have three keyboards here. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. And I have uh, a virtual pipe organ at home. Uh, I have a Hammond here. I have a, a, Yama, a small Yamaha Electone that I love because it's, it has some silly effects. And I have an <laughs> Italian Farsisa from 1972. Wow. And I've hooked a bunch of pedals on, on it, so it's, it's great for dis distortion and uh, uh, ring modulator has an amazing impact on it. Uh, I own uh, a synthesizer. Um, so we listen to a lot of music and soon we will be starting the, uh, the Christmas playlist. <laughs> my wife is trying to bring it now i'm, I'm not letting it happen <laughs> no no i'm being silly just we, we do it as a joke um yeah we a lot of jazz a lot of contemporary music uh my colleague shall uh, knows quite well a contemporary uh classical music um so you listen to all kind of things but you know, the pumps and make so much noise that uh, we have to play it loud. <laughs> it's the only way to listen to it. Uh, how about uh, doing some collabs? Are you a brewery that likes to do collabs with other breweries? And if you could make a collab with any band or any brewery, who would that be? Um, uh, we did a collab with uh, Betty Lux. Nice, yes, yes, yes. yes. Cocktail Lager uh, last year, I believe. Uh, we do collaborations with other people like Kitel Coffee. Mm -hmm. 
for us now. So we go mm -hmm. there, taste coffee with beers. Yeah. They, people tell us that this is one of the better coffee versions that we ever did. Nice. Uh, the Fazenda Barrio. Uh, if it was with a band, I would say Chromeo. <laughs> you know? Yes. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's silly fun. It's silly fun. They're great musicians. I love the way that they use the talk box, for instance. I, I wish I, I would use a talk box once in my life. Uh, uh, yeah, or, you know, we're always open to things happening, yeah. Very cool. And, and, and this Chromeo beer, what style of beer would it be and what would you call it? It would be a fun cocktail beer. Like broken hearted and, and yet in love. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, one last question, Martin. It probably never happens to you because uh, you've been doing this a long time and uh, you, you're very in control. But every once in a while, it happens to everyone. What is your hangover cure? Boy, not falling uh, <laughs> not falling on the floor. Uh, <laughs> hangover cure. Uh, you have to drink electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Gatorade is your friend. Uh, the last hangover I had was uh, after the Mondial de la Dia when we were there like two years ago. And the, the next day we had to go and pick up things. And I was like a zombie walking around, <laughs> complaining, <laughs> complaining <laughs> like a baby. Um, yeah, so electrolytes. Awesome, awesome. Water, juice, and, and salt. Awesome. Martin, thank you so, so much for taking the time to have a chat with me, talking about your life, talking about uh, liking all kinds of styles of music, and of course, talking about your beautiful beers. Uh, I really appreciate it. Everyone, please go support Moadigius beers. Uh, I love them, and I'm going to support them for a very long time. Thank you so much, Martin. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Have fun. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. Man, what an insightful, insightful discussion. I really, really enjoy the way that Martin approaches beer. Uh, it is very close to experiences. He's trying to mimic an experience, and I think that is very, very, very cool. Uh, tying it into experiences with food, experiences with uh, life in general. I think that is a very, very insightful way to look at craft beer, and I would love for more brewers to do that rather than just jumping on the hype train and making what other people are doing. Be creative, be like Martin, be like Morégius, be artisanal, because they are doing some awesome, awesome, awesome stuff here in Quebec. And if you can get your hands on some, absolutely do that, because I know that I pick one up whenever I see one. Tomorrow, we get the new installment of the Brutal Awakenings playlist, which has been curated by Jerry Monk, the metal architect himself. Jerry has picked all of the newest, sickest, heaviest, most extreme most interesting new releases which just came out today and has put that all into the playlist for us. Trust me, this is the playlist you want to listen to. Get ready for the Brutal Awakenings playlist. If you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, you should absolutely subscribe to it on the podcast platform of your choice. But not only that, you should take the time to rate it and write a review, because if you do that, more people just like yourself will be able to discover the Vox and Hops podcast. Vox and Hops is brought to you by Sound Talent Media. I hope you all have an excellent weekend. I hope you take the time to relax. I hope you take the time to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer, because I know that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll be back next week with two episodes. But until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hopsheads. Oh,